Hello, welcome to John's Author Diary. This is my review of 2019. So this year for me it has been a bit of a roller coaster. I think that's the best way of describing it. Lots of ups, lots of downs. If you're a regular listener to the podcast, you'll have obviously been following along with me. I think looking back, there are a few things that I have changed about the way I work, about the things that I do in everyday life. So for example, in January, I started to meditate. Now I've meditated for most days of 2019. I think at the time of recording this, I'm on something like a 190 day streak of meditation. So that has been a real good thing for me. I think it has done a lot to make me think about what's important and to clear my mind of a lot of the things that come when you do live with mental health issues. So in January, I started a rewrite of Wizard of the Wasteland. So my plans are, over the next year or so, is to re-release the Wasteland series. So once the fourth book is out, I'm going to repackage it, relaunch it, give it a new title, probably new covers, give it a complete overhaul and a relaunch, putting into practice the things that I know now about book marketing, which I didn't when I launched Wizard of the Wasteland. So that isn't a priority, but it's something that I'm going to be doing on an ongoing basis. In January, I released The Hierophant, which is book five of the Ravenglass Chronicles. I also started work on book six, which is called The Lovers. Now, I didn't like this title. I still don't. It makes it sound like a romance novel, but as I've been working on this series, named after tarot cards, my hands are tied as to what the titles are. I also set up my Patreon page, so I've been trying that out this year just to see whether I could get any momentum with it. Unfortunately, I haven't, so... That is something that I won't be continuing next year. In February, I started writing The Chariot. I was really suffering with the depression. So I think I've worked out that my worst times of year, because it's the seasonal affective stuff that really gets to me, are November and February. So I'm going to have to remember that next year in 2020, that February might suck. So I just need to plan accordingly. And with the November, because I've had such a good couple of months with my business I'm going to book a holiday to somewhere like the Canaries just before winter next year just to get a bit of sunshine get a bit of a boost from nice weather. One of the things I did in February as well which was another experiment was to set up a online book club called the Arcane Book Club that has fizzled out and I think my entire relationship with social media has shifted so at the time of recording this I've not been on Facebook for over three weeks I've completely abandoned Twitter. I'm just not interested in the toxicity of the drama, of the hold that it has over people's lives. So I've just made a conscious effort to step away from social media. And I'm in a few Slack groups online as well. So I've deleted Slack off my phone. I'm just not interested. You know, I like building up relationships with people, networking, all those things that are useful when you're running a business. But I think the negatives far outweigh the positives for me. So I have got Facebook still. I've not deleted my account or anything like that. And when I do decide to go back on, I've installed a plugin on my computer that eradicates the Facebook newsfeed and replaces it with an inspirational quote. The distraction engines, that's all they are. They're there to distract you, to move your focus away from what's important. So in March, I wrote the book Strength. I did my last episode of the Stop Booking Around podcast. So this was a podcast I did... Throughout 2018 with my friend Russ, I was helping him write his first novel. It ended up turning into a bit of an interview thing with other authors when he was unable to make the podcast. He ended up telling me that he didn't want to do it anymore and that his interest was probably more in doing role-playing games, making worlds and stories for those rather than actually writing a novel. So I just said, it's fine. (laughs) I'd rather you just tell me. So he did. And we stopped doing a podcast. So... That came to an end in March. I do miss doing the podcast with him just because it was a great way just to catch up with him and to have a laugh with him. And I do enjoy helping people with their writing. So as well in March, I had a bit of a chest infection, but that gave me an opportunity to watch some masterclass videos. I watched the Dan Brown one, which I found really useful. I think what I found at that time was I've reached a kind of plateau with my learning, with my craft of writing. And so what I've been doing since then is pay more attention to the books that I read and also some books I'm going to be doing this more as I go forward I'm going to be picking them apart I'm going to be revisiting them deconstructing them 
trying to figure out how they work. Also in March, I started recording episodes for the Sci-Fi Roundtable podcast. So this was a idea broached on a Facebook group that I'm in, which is called the Sci-Fi Roundtable. It's a lot of sci-fi authors. And the idea came up of doing a roundtable-style podcast. I helped to kind of crystallize the idea, and I did the editing and production. I don't host them all the time, so it's a nice division of labor that goes on. And we're still doing those We've been releasing them since April, so they've been going on. They've been doing well. So I prefer that in terms of networking and actually talking to people rather than Facebook and Twitter and things like that. Moving into April then, I launched the Chariot. And this was a month where I really started to get frustrated with the Black Death trilogy, which still isn't out. Um, (laughs) So what happened was we had two collaborators. There was myself, there was Lynn. And there was Killian. And me and Lynn had written our contribution over a year ago. We wrote it in December of 2017, January 2018, that kind of time. And Killian was working on his third book for ages, for ages, for ages. Kept emailing me. He'd keep going, oh, yeah, I'll have it in a week. I'll have it in a week. And then I said to him, oh, can you just send us the second book so we can at least start going through that? And he lost that. So all he'd sent really was the first draft of the first book. And so I just said to him, look, no hard feelings. We really want to get this done. I think we need to part ways. And we have. And we're still friends. So, you know, we talk to each other regularly. And I'll admit there was a bit of resentment for a while. There was a bit of bitterness for a month or two. But I've got over that. I've realized it wasn't worth me being annoyed about. You know, people do have to do what's best for them sometimes. You know, personally, that's not how I operate. But... I'm not that person. So we've had to write a novel's worth of material between us. So this has meant me writing 65 extra scenes for the Black Death series. And now it's with Lynn at the moment and he's working on bringing up the word count of those books, adding in descriptions and things like that. As an experience of collaboration, I'm a little bit disappointed. I think things just take far too long. I feel like we've left money on the table and things like that. So hopefully this trilogy will be out next year. Hopefully it's out of my hands anyway. So we'll see what happens. This was also the month where I shifted my Ravenglass Chronicles. So when I first started doing the series, I had The Fool for free and then it went into The Magician. And I started getting a lot of reviews of people who were annoyed that The Fool was quite short. It was free, but there were so many complaints about the length that I thought, screw it. I pulled the book, I rejigged it so it was part of The Magician, so The Magician ended up being a lot longer, and then had to do a lot of things in the background to make it all work. So as well, Amazon wouldn't let me have the full as part of the series page, so I think that combined with the reviews just made me make my decision. And so there were a lot of weird effects of this, where there was links in the backs of books and things like that, so there was a lot of work to do to get that sorted, but I did. So in April as well, I also started work on The Hermit, and I was also introduced to Graham Hancock, so I listened to an interview he had on the Joe Rogan Experience, and I've read quite a few books now of his since then. He's very interested in ancient civilizations and kind of having a fresh take on prehistoric man and things like that, so very interesting stuff. So moving into May... I did a lot of work getting Black Death 3 rewritten because I'd realised I'd only written the first draft of my contribution to that book, so I did a rewrite of that. I got The Hermit out, started writing Wheel of Fortune. I also wrote the first draft of Podcasting for Authors, which is a non-fiction book. Moving into June then, I worked on Justice and the Ravenglass Chronicles. I also read a book which was a game changer, I would describe it as. So this was a book by Hal Elrod called The Miracle Morning. And so in mid-June, I started getting up at 5am. And I'd be getting up, I'd be doing meditating, exercising, practicing gratitude and doing affirmations. So I've been carrying on with that as best as I can. Now this gave a really big shot of productivity during the rest of the month of June and then into July, right before the summer holidays. I'm recording this on December 20th and last couple of days I got up at 5am, today I didn't. So this might be something to do with the seasonal effective stuff. It's really hard some mornings to get up 
this time of year. So this is going to be something that I'm going to really go into probably after February, probably as spring arrives, get back into it and have that really productive few months, have that really productive time because I know that I can get a bulk of work done. So it was this month that I resurrected Blind Reset. So basically a year had passed since looking at the book. I went back to it. It wasn't so bad. There were a few things I tweaked with the outline, but it was there. It was fine. I redrafted it. I now have a first draft that's ready. I've started doing the second draft of it. So I'm about 20% into that at the time of recording. Going into July, I think I had my most productive month ever. So this was carrying on with the Miracle Morning stuff. I found I doubled, sometimes tripled my productivity on days. I got the Black Death, the new scenes for that finished. I got the scenes for Black Death London written. I finished the first draft of Blind Reset. I finished the first draft of Cleric of the Wasteland. And I launched The Hermit. So that was really good. And then in the last week, it was my 10th wedding anniversary. So went on holiday for a week with my wife. We had a great time. After that, I went to a book conference called 20 Books Edinburgh. This was fantastic. A lot of great ideas, a lot of stuff that should have given me a boost. But I think the events of August made that difficult. So in August, my dad took his own life by hanging himself. I think my productivity has suffered since then. And I know that it's not just that, but there's been a combination of things. So around the time of his funeral, I was working on a book called The Hanged Man. This is just part of the synchronicity. Working with these books named after the tarot cards. I was getting real resistance. So this book was a real struggle to write. I found it really difficult to get through didn't come out until the middle of October so that felt like a real drag. In that time now I did write a non-fiction book, The Stoic Writer. I also wrote a new prequel called The Fool and I wrote a story for a anthology. So this was a, another prequel to the Ravenglass Chronicles. It was set about 18 years before the events of the story. So it was quite difficult to get back into things after some holiday as well because my wife's schedule had changed at work so she used to do Monday to Wednesday she'd have Thursdays off and then be back at work on Fridays and this time she has Tuesdays off so I don't know why but that has made a difference to the way I'm working it's changed the way I structure my weeks and things like that so there's lots of little things that happened in September as well that caused disruption so there was things like getting a kitchen fitted getting a boiler done having problems with plumbing now, what was good about September is I released the Ravenglass Chronicles box set, books 1 to 11, and this has been by far my most successful release to date. So it's a 99 cents box set, and it's selling a lot of copies and getting a lot of page reads. So that's been great in terms of my finances, because one trouble that I've found is that the Ravenglass books as individual episodes haven't been selling that well. So it's been really difficult to get cash flow in order to invest in my business. But this box set is now earning enough to pay for things like holiday and for decorating and things like that. So that's fantastic. So in October, I had the disruption of Digit getting attacked. Digit is my guide dog. I'm visually impaired and he helps me get around. And so he was attacked when we were walking home with my son from school. So he was out of action for a couple of weeks. This meant I couldn't really go anywhere far because I didn't have a guide for one and I couldn't really take the dog anywhere when he had a big cone on his head. So that was a bit frustrating. And then there was also the fallout of admin and speaking to police and dog wardens and guide dogs and things like that. So there was a lot of stuff around this that I had to do that caused an interruption. So it was in October that I finished The Hangman, got that out. I also took on the services of a life coach. So I've had a few appointments with her now, found it really useful. Basically, I need to give myself more breaks, I need to give myself more credit for things, and I need to realise that sometimes life gets in the way. So, not to beat myself up about it, I've just got to kind of go with the punches, as it were. I can't be so set to my goals, so rigid. I need to have them as almost like moving targets rather than, okay, I need to get this finished by here. So, just useful to kind of reframe things like that. And, and also, reframing success was another thing that came from it which was not to frame my success on things that I can't control. So instead of looking at, you know, my position, my Amazon ranking or, you know, how many how much I've made at the end of the month, my success should be measured by what I've actually done and achieved, not by the external factors. So November, as most Novembers appear to be, I 
had real difficulties with the seasonal affective disorder. I also had the flu, so I think these are linked in a way. I think that my body slows down. I think it probably affects my immune system, and then I don't have the resistance to deal with colds and things like that. So I started writing the book Death, which is book 13 of the Ravenglass Chronicles. Again, this was a slow book to write, I think just because of feeling ill, just because of feeling the depression. I had a bit of a blow with putting my book, The Stoic Writer, up for pre-order. It ended up that I had broken a copyright policy on Amazon because of the way the book was structured. So what I've done with that is I've pulled it, I've rewritten it, and it works better now, and it's all my stuff. There's, you know, It was originally a commentary involving lots of quotes from Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, people like that. And now the commentary is there, but without the original quotes. So it's more of a thematic exploration of Stoic themes for writers. So November was actually my best month to date in publishing. In terms of the amount of money that I earned, as I say, I can afford to buy a holiday, which is amazing. December, at the time of recording this, I am almost at the same level for the month. So who knows, depending on what the Christmas holidays do, I might overtake it. I'm very pleased that this seems to have all been organic. I've done hardly anything in terms of advertising since the first couple of weeks. Did a few promos in December just to give it a little bit of a boost in the lead up to the holidays. But the book has been consistently selling, consistently getting paid reads. So I couldn't be happier with that. It has gone past my expectations. And because I know how Amazon works, I'm not taking that for granted at all. I know I am probably just around the corner from a big drop. <laughs> so... Let's see how that goes. There is a thing on Amazon which some authors called the 90-day cliff, which is basically three months after publishing a book, Amazon stopped doing a lot of the things that get people to read your books organically. So I will probably have to start doing some more paid ads in January and February. But that's not a problem because I have the cash flow to do that for once. So woohoo. Also in November, my family and I did Thanksgiving. This was a adopted festival. So we took this from America. Now, we didn't do it in the American way, we just made it our own. Okay, the date was the same, but it was basically about having a meal with my family, giving thanks, sharing what we're grateful for. And I've mentioned this on my um, on my newsletter, and I got some snotty email from someone saying, I don't celebrate colonialism, why do you? And I thought, how sad, what a very sad existence someone must have when they see someone who is celebrating gratitude and instead turns it into some political thing of, I'm celebrating colonialism. No, I'm not American. I'm not there. I wasn't alive 500 years ago when Spain colonized America. I had nothing to do with that. What I did is I celebrated what I was thankful for, what I was grateful for. Other people across the world were doing the same thing. So I think maybe if the person who'd sent that email has spent more time thinking about what is good in the world, what to celebrate, to look for things to be grateful for. Maybe they wouldn't have that hostile reaction to someone trying to do something good. Very sad. Very sad. So finally, we are into December. I've been editing Blind Reset. I've been trying to get temperance going. I think I've been struggling with the seasonal affective disorder this month. I think that, again, I just need to revisit this in January. I'm going to go back to the outline and try again because I'm not happy with how it's going and I know that I can improve it. So 2019 then has been a mixed year. As you can see, I released eight books, which are all in the Ravenglass Chronicles. I've got several books that are poised to go out into the world. Next time I'm going to talk about what my goals are for 2019. And so I'll go into that in a bit more detail. So hope you had a great Christmas or whatever you celebrated. So until next time, cheerio. 